Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Fondin and I'm the author of my latest book, gotta put it the right direction, The Empowered Divine Feminine, Becoming an Unstoppable Woman in the 21st Century and Beyond. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. And thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. I do tarot and astrology readings. You can book it at my website, michellefondenauthor.com. And also on my website, you can subscribe to my new newsletter called Empowering Thoughts. Today's topic is becoming empowered in your thought process. And I am going to start with a quote, but first, I am here with my two mascots. I know some of you that might be new to my channel are just wondering who the guys to my right side, your left side are. I've got Gudetama here and I've got Grogu. These are the mascots to help keep me aligned on track and a little lighthearted. I also have my Grogu Tumblr with my Ticino Dandelion Caramel Nut Tea. And I'll take a little sip here. Yes, I am drinking hot tea, even though it is very warm here on this summer day in Southern California. I love the warm temperatures. I love the warm weather. <laughs> I was waiting quite some time for this warm weather to kick in. Let's go ahead and get started. And to that end, I want to start with a quote here. And this is from the book, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. And I'm going to post the quote up there for you to see. Men and women themselves are the makers of themselves by virtue of the thoughts which they choose and encourage. That mind is the master weaver, both of the inner garment of character and the outer garment of circumstance. And that as they may have hit harrow, woven in ignorance and pain, they may now weave in enlightenment and happiness. And that is by James Allen. Now, you must remember that this book was written probably around the year, I want to say around the year 1910, because James Allen, well, probably earlier than that, James Allen lived between 1864 and 1912. So I'm imagining that the book was probably written a little bit before 1912, before not exactly sure of the precise year, because this is a reprint it just has the Amazon date, which the year I bought it was 2019. <laughs> this quote from As a Man Thinketh is something that I really want to emphasize in this new series, this new thought process that we're having all together on the Empowerment Tribe channel, which is a recent change in the name to the channel, the Empowerment Tribe. And this section called Empowering Thoughts. This is really important because we are on the road to self-actualization and self-realization and getting the early principles of those, right? Of self-actualization and self-realization, getting the early principles, grasping the early principles and not only memorizing them, not only intellectualizing them, but applying them to your own life and allowing them to absorb within you and to become deeply ingrained in the person that you are is going to make changes in your life so much easier towards your own empowerment. If you don't absorb these early thoughts of these principles of becoming empowered, it's going to be an uphill battle to become empowered. And so I'd like to break down the quote and I'm going to comment a little bit on each of these to get the global whole of what James Allen in this quote was saying. This is almost the display quote for his own book. Let's start. Men and women themselves, and I included the men and women they themselves because he has an interesting way of speaking. They themselves are the makers of themselves. So what is that to say? What is that to say? It's really interesting when you think about it, that we create our own reality. 
most often we believe that our reality is created for us that we have very little control over our lives, very little control over our realities, that things happen to us and not for us. And we really don't give it a lot of thought that we are co-creators of our lives. And so here in the first part of the quote, it's men and women are the makers of themselves. In other words, men and women are the co-creators of their own lives. And that's a first principle that it's really important to grasp in the following, because if you don't believe that you are the co-creator of your own life, if you do not believe that you are the maker of yourself, if you don't believe that you are in direct control over your life, your circumstances, the events that unfold and happen and the way you react to them, then the next thought is going to be incredibly challenging. As an exercise, let's embrace this, just that you are the maker of yourself. I am the maker of myself. We are co-creators with God, spirit, source in the events, happening, circumstances in our lives. We are not a passive bystander, just on the side of the road, watching the events of our lives unfold and having zero control over them. You are the maker of your own life. You co-create your life. You are the author of your own life. You have a big say, much bigger than you have ever been taught. By virtue of the thoughts which they choose and encourage, by the virtue of the thoughts which they choose and encourage. Now, this is another big challenge for many, many people. And I know this because I teach meditation. I've been teaching meditation since the year 2009, and I've taught hundreds of people meditation. And in the meditation course, we talk a lot about the mind thinking thoughts. It is said that we have around 50,000 thoughts per day. Now this is give or take a thousand or give or take 10,000. We have around 50,000 thoughts a day and 49,000 of those 50,000 thoughts are the same thoughts we had yesterday. In other words, most people do not evolve their thoughts very much. They tend to think the same things day in and day out over and over and over again. So that's the first part of thought when I'm teaching my meditation course, that's something that I mention. The second thing that I mentioned after making my clients aware that we think so many thoughts every day, and you might even be aware of it because I've heard time and again, oh, I can't meditate. I think thoughts all the time. I'm like, well, that's just being human because all of us do that. The second principle after that is you are the thinker of the thoughts. You are in direct control of your thoughts. You are the thinker of thoughts. It's not like thoughts just pop up in your mind. It's not as if you are a bystander to your thoughts taking charge of you. You are the thinker of thoughts. So you can orchestrate your thoughts to the way you would like to orchestrate them. Now, it's not as if your mind will think thoughts or not think thoughts, depending on what you say. The mind, the nature of the mind is to think thoughts. But usually the mind is thinking old thoughts. The mind is just going through habits, habitual thought. Something that you thought yesterday, you might think it again today. It's going through these automated responses, which you have not changed. And so when you come to the realization that, hey, I'm the thinker of thoughts, I can generate any thought that I want, right? I, get, I can take active charge of my thoughts. I'm not a prisoner to my thoughts if I take charge of those thoughts. You're only prisoner to your thoughts if you don't know that you're the thinker of thoughts, that you are the master weaver, as James Allen said, you are the master weaver of your thoughts. And you can generate those thoughts for the positive or for the negative. You can generate those thoughts to co-create your existence, or you can generate those thoughts to create your disaster. Because we do, we do either or, right? And this is something we constantly do. And we just don't realize how much authority, how much power we have over our thoughts. 
man and woman, according to the language of the times. You have to realize that James Allen lived prior to all the different ones. It was like man or woman. And mostly at those times, they just spoke in terms of man, meaning human being, right? According to James Allen, man or woman creates their reality, are the master weavers of their reality by the thoughts that they think. So the first principle is you are the maker of yourself. You are the maker of yourself by virtue of the thoughts you choose. Okay. You are the maker of yourself by virtue of the thoughts that you choose to have day in and day out, second by second, hour by hour, minute by minute. So you are in direct control over your destiny. You are in direct control over your life by virtue of the thoughts that you choose to think. Okay. Not the thoughts that are automatic, not the thoughts that are outdated, not the thoughts that are knee jerk reactions, not the thoughts that are old habits. But the thoughts that you choose to think are going to help you co-create your life rather than the thoughts that you become slave to, you become a prisoner to, those old thoughts. Because thoughts are thoughts, right? It's not going to discriminate between if I constantly think negatively or if I constantly think positively you're still thinking thoughts. You can just now direct it in the way that you want to go. Let's continue with that quote and then we'll give some examples because I think this is really important. That mind is the master weaver, both of the inner garment of character and the outer garment of circumstance, the inner garment of character and the outer garment of circumstance. What you were thinking all day long, becomes manifest in the real world. What you think about all day long becomes manifest in the real world. So what does this mean? It means that if you are a person, for example, who is out to show the world, I'm a good person, I'm a kind person, I'm a generous person, but then on the inside all day, you're thinking thoughts that are not kind, that are not generous, that are not loving, then what will manifest on the outside, even if you say, I'm a good person, I'm a generous person, I'm a kind person, what will manifest on the outside is someone who is unkind and unloving and ungenerous. It's just a result of what your inner world is. It's the weaving of that inner garment. So if you constantly are thinking, I don't have enough, I don't have enough, I don't have enough, then that is going to show up in your character as being stingy, as being not giving to others, as being cheap, if you will. So it's going to keep showing up like that, even though in the forefront, you're like, I want to be a generous person, but that's not what's going to manifest if your thoughts are completely the contrary to that. So we need to really be careful about how we are thinking on the inside, meaning our inner thoughts, what people don't hear come out of our mouths necessarily. It's those things that we think about all day long without speaking them those thoughts are going to become the strongest and those thoughts will eventually come out as part of your character. So it is really important for you to listen to your inner dialogue, the inner thoughts, because those inner thoughts, rest assured, will manifest on the exterior and they do. They do, whether you want it to or not, whether you like it or not, those thoughts will manifest on the exterior, eventually. You might be able to mask it for a time, but after a while, those thoughts will come out in the physical world in some way, shape, or form. So you really are the master weaver of your inner character, as well as your outer circumstance. Because if you, for example, really want to get married, but on the interior, 
you're saying like, I'll never get married. I'll never get married. I'll never find this person. I'll never find the person that I love. The person that I love is not out there. The person that I love is not available. The person. So all of that inner, inner, inner dialogue is going to manifest to the outer world eventually of you not finding the person you want to marry. So if you were to reverse that and say, I absolutely positively will find the person I want to marry. I absolutely positively will find someone who will love me for who I am. I know this person is out there. This person is coming toward me now. And you repeat those thoughts day in and day out every day in your silent moments, in your quiet moments when you're by yourself and your mind is only filled with those thoughts of absolute knowing that this person will show up, that you're going to get married, that you're going to be happy, that this person will love you for who you are, that you'll love them for who they are. And if you entertain those thoughts day in and day out, day in and day out, rest assured, the outer circumstances of your life will reflect what has been going on on the inside of you. Both of the inner garment of character and the outer garment of circumstance, and that, as they may have hetero woven in ignorance and pain, they may now weave in enlightenment and happiness. You don't know what you don't know. You just don't know. (laughs) You don't know what you don't know until you know it. And now that you know how powerful your thoughts are and that you are the maker of yourself by virtue of the thoughts that you think, you can now choose which thoughts to think. And instead of weaving, instead of generating in your life pain and suffering, you can now weave the results of enlightenment and happiness. Now that you know, now that you know how important those thoughts are that you think every single day, every hour, every second, every minute, now this is not an easy thing to do. The principle is easy. The principle is very easy, right? It's like, I'm the co-creator of my own life. What I think is what manifests. My inner thoughts build my character. The outer world is going to be shown by the circumstances of what I have been thinking. That's what it is. And now that I'm aware of it, I get to choose my own thoughts and I'm going to choose the thoughts which are going to build up my life, which are going to build happiness, success, enlightenment. And I'm going to not entertain the thoughts that are going to bring me pain, sorrow, and suffering. So you can understand this on a conceptual level. You can understand it on an intellectual level, but putting it into practice is a lot more challenging. And the reason why it's so much more challenging is because we are surrounded by people thinking negative thoughts, first of all. And secondly, the brain, the mind is hardwired to think negatively. One of the reasons our minds are hardwired to think negatively is because we do have a survivalist brain. (laughs) Our brains were hardwired for survival for millions and millions and millions of years. And so now trying to change the way the brain is operating from a negative mindset to a positive mindset, it requires rewiring the thinking, rewiring the inner dialogue, rewiring the old habits. And those habits, some of them, the negative thought habits are very strong. And it's always like looking out for danger, looking out for instability, looking out for what will go wrong. And changing it around takes extra energy. It takes a lot more energy in the beginning, at least. It takes a lot more energy to generate the positive thoughts, which are going to create the positive results in your life on a consistent basis. And not just happening once in a while. Not just happening when you want some great thing to happen in your life, but on a consistent basis, day in and day out, every second of every hour of every day that you are the thinker of thoughts, that you are the chooser of thoughts. You are orchestrating and choosing the way you want to think rather than becoming a prisoner to your thoughts. It requires a lot more energy in the beginning 
And we are, as I mentioned, surrounded by people thinking negative thoughts. So that makes it even more challenging because we have this internal need and this this real need as a human being for connection, for love, connection, and being a part of something, being a part of a tribe, for example, being a part of a city, a state, a country, being a part of a church or a school or a workplace. We really have this need to belong. And in that need to belong, we want to not be too terribly different from others. And since we don't want to be too terribly different from others, we can elect to think the way others think. We can elect to talk the way others talk because we want to belong. We want to be a part of, we don't want to be separate from, we don't want to be apart from because being apart from is really painful, right? According to ancient history and our our old human behavioral patterns, if you were ousted from your tribe, from your village, that was a big thing. You would probably die alone without the protection of your village or tribe. And so the human brain is also hardwired to not want to be excluded from the tribe, from the village, from the city, from the church, from the school, whatever group you happen to be in. And so you are fighting against two very ancient responses, one being the reptilian brain constantly going into fight or flight or survival mode. Secondarily, you are fighting against individuality versus belonging to a group. And when that group is mostly negative thinking, you might elect to just be a part of it because you do not want to be separate from. And so that's why you might find that there are very few people that are able to master their thoughts, orchestrate their thoughts, and really be the maker of themselves in a positive way. Be the maker of themselves to be able to create the happiness and enlightenment that they so desire in their life. And like I said, not on a haphazard way, or not just like a circumstance that happens once a year, or a synchronicity that happens once every six months, but on a consistent basis, day in and day out, having the thoughts that are going to generate the co-creation of your life in a positive momentum, a positive way on a consistent basis, day by day basis, hour by hour, month by month, not just once in a while, not just when I need something really big to happen. And so training your brain is a huge part of this. It's a huge part of it. And in the end, you get to decide. You need to decide how you would like to live your life. And that is empowering. The empowering piece is you never really thought perhaps you had the choice. You never entertained the idea that I am the thinker of the thoughts. I'm the orchestrator of everything I think. I don't need to fall prey to old habits. I don't need to fall prey to old thoughts that are outdated, that don't even matter anymore, that might not even be true anymore. I don't need to fall prey to other people's negative thinking and really adopt that as my own thinking. And then you get to choose. And then it's an active choice for each thought that comes through. It's an active choice to be a certain way, to think a certain way, to weave your character in a certain way so that your outer circumstances are matching what you desire on the inside, what you really want to be on the inside. And then you can see where it matches. There's a matching there. Let me give you an example. When I was living in Virginia, I had this dream for years. And in fact, gosh, it took me 35 years, I believe. not even, not 35, um, 30 years, about 30 years to realize this dream of moving to California. And I had had this dream since I was 15. And for years I would dream about it and I would talk to people about it. And I would say, "I, I really want to move to California. I have this dream to move to California. This is my place. This is where I need to be. I don't know how I'm gonna get there, but I have this dream. And in talking to people about this dream, I got so much negative feedback 
And the major feedback I got was, oh, California, it's so expensive. And everyone I talked to, oh, California, it's so expensive. How could you move there? And over and over again for years, I would hear the same thing. Oh, California is so expensive. How could you move there? And of course I adopted that and I got scared and I thought about that and I said, oh my God, how could I move to California? It's so expensive. Until one day I woke up and I said, hey, wait a minute. There are all kinds of people that live in California. There are rich people and poor people. There are middle-class people. There are people that are making it. There are people that are not making All kinds of people are in California and they live there. And so if there is a full spectrum of people who live in California, then I can certainly make it in California. It's not just the rich that live in California. If that were the case, then there wouldn't be any poverty here. And that's not the case. So I changed my own thought and I made the decision not to adopt the thought that other people brought to me that I then adopted as my own thoughts. And once I changed the thought and said, this doesn't make any sense because there are people of all socioeconomic statuses that live in California. And therefore that comment is invalid. It's invalid. How can it be too expensive if there are people with low incomes living in California? And once I really adopted that and I said, you know, anybody can move to California, live in California and be successful. Once I adopted that mindset, within a year, I was living in California. And it wasn't until I adopted that mindset that the wheels started turning in the right direction for me to then move to California. Now, again, I didn't know how it was going to happen. I didn't know how I was going to generate the income. I didn't even know where I was going to live. I had no idea how any of that was going to work out. But I changed the thought about moving to California, which then propelled into motion my desire to move to California, which then propelled the the wheels in motion to get me here and to make it. To say, okay, here's what I need to do to make it. But that never would have happened had I not changed my thoughts about it. And it was just that simple. It was a simple shift. It was a simple shift of changing my thoughts, which changed the direction of my life in the way I wanted it to go. And according to my desires, right? And it wasn't like I had a crystal ball. I didn't. Like, you need to know this about the things that you would like to co-create in your life and the direction you'd like to go in to your life is that I didn't have a crystal ball. I had no idea how it was gonna work out. I just had to trust. But the first thing I absolutely positively needed to do was to let go of that thought that California is too expensive. I had to let go of that thought. If I hadn't let go of that thought, I still would be in Virginia. And it's something like that that can change your entire life And so once I had let go of the limiting beliefs that other people were handing over to me that I gladly took on, once I was able to let go of those limiting beliefs, the wheels in motion moved forward and they moved forward toward my happiness and enlightenment. And so we are the master weavers of our thoughts. Whether you like it or not, that is the truth. Now, the other thing that might make you resistant to this, that you are the master weaver of your thoughts, is it puts all of the responsibility on your shoulders. All of the responsibility is on your shoulders. Every single bit of it. If you are the master weaver of your thoughts, if you are the co-creator of your life, If everything you think about creates your character and your outer circumstances for the good or for the bad, then all of the responsibility for those thoughts falls on your shoulders. And a lot of people, I would wager to say most people don't want that responsibility. Because if you have that responsibility, you cannot blame anyone else for your circumstances. 
I'm going to say that one more time because I, I think some of you may not be getting that. If you believe that you are the maker of yourself, the co-creator of your existence, the co-creator of your life, and that through your thoughts, you are the master weaver of your circumstances, your inner character and your outer circumstances. If you believe that, then that means that you must believe in full responsibility for the circumstances in your life. I know that's a hard pill to swallow. I know it's so hard to swallow that pill. And I know for me, for example, for many years, I resisted that complete thought. I did believe we were the co-creator of our existence. I did believe that thoughts have power. I did believe that I am a co-creator of my life but I didn't believe that I had full responsibility for the circumstances that surrounded me. And I resisted it for a long period of time until I came to an enlightened moment where I realized it was true. All of my thoughts caused me to make choices. All of those choices that I made caused me to be in some circumstances that I did not want to be in. Part of me wanted to be in it, but part of me absolutely didn't want to be in it. And so I was kind of like in this in between where I was still trying to blame other people for the circumstances I found myself in. And when I realized it's because you're thinking in a certain way that is going against what you really want ultimately for your life, then I began to change my thoughts. And once I changed my thoughts, my circumstances, even though slowly, slowly, my circumstances began to change because my thoughts began to change about those circumstances. And again, it empowered me because then I was able to take responsibility, full responsibility for my life after that. But believe me, I tried to resist it and resist it and blame other people and other situations and other circumstances. And in the end, it didn't change anything until I changed my thoughts about it, until I changed my thoughts, which then equaled my actions, right? The inner weaving to the outer circumstances, the outer garment, the outer circumstances. Till I did that, nothing was changing. And once I did it, things started to change. Therefore, it showed me that the responsibility was mine. You can have good things and bad things in your life. Good things and bad things can happen. Sometimes you can't control the outer things, right? Sometimes the environment that you live in Sometimes the world events that happen are beyond your control, are totally beyond your control. And that is not your fault, right? If you live in a war-torn country, it's likely not to be your fault, right? Unless if you chose to move there and you're like, oh, this looks like a good place to move to. But if it's it was just your home country and that's where you're at and those are the circumstances that are happening but you get to choose how you're gonna interpret that situation. You get to choose. And I know it sounds awful, but look at certain people like Nelson Mandela, who was in a prison for 25 years and chose to think in a certain way. Or Mahatma Gandhi, again, who was constantly imprisoned and who was thinking in a certain way according to his circumstances. There are so many other examples in history of people who were strong and steadfast in co-creating their own existence, in co-creating their own life, even though some external circumstances that were beyond their control were happening around them. They just chose to look at things very differently and think things extremely differently. And then their lives turned out in a very different manner. For some did, some didn't, right? Those that began to think in a different way, we know about them and we talk about them because they became iconic in history as being strong people who were thinking their own thoughts, even though the people around them were thinking negatively, if you will. So I hope this helps to kickstart your thought process, for lack of better words, <laughs> your thought process about being the maker of yourself by co-creating your life through your thoughts as a master weaver for the good or for the bad, for the good or for the bad. 
and weaving the inner garment of your character and the outer garment of your circumstances. And I hope that once you really internalize this and realize how powerful your thoughts are, that you can begin the process of being empowered. And it's, it doesn't matter what situation you are in, you will never get out of it until you realize this ever, right? I talk a lot about being in a relationship with an alcoholic person and it wasn't until my, it, it didn't matter what he did. I thought for years that if he changed, everything would be fine. Everything would go well. It wasn't until I changed my thoughts that I was able to change my circumstance. I kept thinking it was him. I kept thinking it was his problem. I kept thinking he was the one ruining the relationship. But really it was me. If I wanted things to be different then I needed to change and I needed to start with my thought process. And if I didn't start with my thought process, I could not have changed a single thing because my old thought process wasn't working at all. And that goes for so many things in my life. That goes for so many things in the lives of people who understand this principle. So I hope this helps you and generates more thoughts that are more evolutionary in nature, thoughts that are going to help you realize how negative your thinking is sometimes, if not most oftentimes, and how negative the thinking of the other people around you tends to be. And again, you can't control other people. You cannot control other people, but you can control how much time you spend with them. You can control how much you listen to them when they're talking negatively and you can choose to walk away. And you can also choose to have your thoughts, hold that quiet space for your thoughts and just brush off their negative talk, negative thinking as just something that doesn't belong to you, that belongs to them, give it back to them, it doesn't belong to you and that you can be independent, as Dr. Wayne Dyer always said, and I think he was quoting The Course in Miracles, independent of the good opinion of other people, that it doesn't matter what other people are saying to you, that you can generate your own thoughts and you can co-create your life toward better happiness and enlightenment. So I wanna thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to my channel below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. And thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sharing this video with others who are interested in learning more about empowering their thoughts and becoming self-actualized. Thank you so much for your support of my YouTube channel. You can buy one of my 11 published books. You can book a reading with me or join Patreon and donate to the channel via Patreon. And I'll see you in the next video.